you cannot be having um, negotiations with us. The the timeline for the committee to conclude this work is about eight weeks. Mm. But as we speak, you go ahead to begin to announce the uh, purported uh, uh, palliative that so in other words, labor was not in the know or this palliative that the government is planning now was not in the negotiation uh, 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 process with labor it was never mentioned it's completely unilateral decision by government because we're already on the table discussing trying to work out details of of what should be done economic decisions uh, that 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 will be implemented to the generality uh, of nigeria uh, how is it now out of place if the if the government says well yes we're having a conversation with labor to come up with a more robust approach but we think we should just do this on the side pending when we we get to that resolution thank you very much you can't do that because part of the discussion that is ongoing is also palliative for nigerians and monetary palliative we think at this time is completely misplaced. You can imagine where you are giving 8,000 Naira to 12 million families for six months. After six months, what happens? Now, 8,000 Naira per family, how much is it in absolute value for the six months per family? You are giving them about 48,000 Naira. And then on a given day, you are giving them about 266 Naira that cannot buy one loaf of bread. That is actually subjecting Nigerians to become slaves in their country and we cannot be discussing all this on the table mm. then you go ahead and unilaterally take a political decision aimed at at um, a scoring chip goals so that when nigerians say oh um palliative has been given and then we begin to jump and clap the palliative have been given and then put pressure on the people who are negotiating on the table they have ambushed us and it's, it's, it's not fair they mm. should primarily hold on and allow the committee if they are genuine because what their action portends now is that government is not even genuine they, they are not having that negotiation in good faith what would be then an alternative because if we're saying that uh, the government uh, cannot do this uh, is it because it's going to amount to a waste of funds or because Sarah thinks that uh, economically this is not viable or perhaps uh, we do not have the data to identify those that these monies are intended for. What exactly was, is the problem with the government wanting to issue palliatives? Because we know that this is done around the world. It's not like it's the government trying to do something that has not been done before. In the United States, uh, they have a system where this works for unemployed people, for uh, elderly people, etc., etc. So, so what exactly makes this particular idea by the government uh, ill-timed or, or, or wrong at the moment? Thank you very much. There are two issues. You can look at this from two perspectives, at least from Sarah's point of view. One is the transparency and accountability issues. And second, are the economic principles behind this uh, proposed action of government. And these, both of these issues can be looked at from the context of dissidents. We have seen this happen too many times. This is not a new thing. We've seen this happen too many times not to understand what this is and what the results would be because we've seen it before. Let's speak to the transparency and accountability issues. We've seen government put money into ventures that we have we've not seen how it is managed a lot of times, too many times. And I'll give you an example earlier of the same cash transfer to the people that the past administration has done that hasn't benefited anyone till today and was shrouded in secrecy. Government could not even account for this. Serap went to court on this matter. We have another matter pending in court on that same on that same uh, cash transfer program. And so again, you can liken it to money just uh, being frittered away. And then the second aspect are the economic principles behind this. Looking at the nature of poverty, you gave an example of what happened in America during COVID-19. Of course, we have different structural economies when you look at it, when you look at those provisions. The real level of poverty in Nigeria cannot even accommodate that problem. And that's not talking about the lack of transparency and accountability in the management of those funds. How will 8,000 there paid over six months to one year really lift anybody out of poverty? With the rising cost of goods and services, it is just not it is just not logical. It doesn't make sense. And again, we've seen this happen before. It's not new. It never lifted anyone out of poverty. If at all, it made people more poorer. And probably some few people who ended up poverty for pocketing those money. It made them richer. And that is what's going to happen ultimately in the system. Mm. Which is why this is just another fruitless and wasteless uh, venture on the part of government, which is just a matter of populism. Our recommendations are that government should first and foremost ensure that it is transparent.
spreads on our continent. And within that context, it's also the need, it's a necessity, and it's a demand on, the, on behalf of the people to cut the cost of governance. That is, the recurrent expenditures that public officers, particularly those elected and appointed, take on. That is the first place to start. And then secondly, to make sure that these funds that they saved are redirected to particular areas of infrastructure. For instance, transportation. Transportation is one of those short-term means that we go back and push it in sector first of cities. And that means that government-run initiatives to provide buses and other means of transportation is one of the main government can should go. But most importantly, no matter the amount of money we throw at this, if it is not managed transparently and I don't think again, it's going to be a little or no results. And I haven't said that. That means that government should cut the cost of governance. By the starting from the present, I gave a good example, cutting the cost of governance, doing away with pension laws, doing away with security votes, and this is really a lot of allocations to the National Assembly. Yeah, those allocations of critical infrastructure, both for short term and long term, can really be efforts starting with the immediate six months period. And our next line of action is government or the this application, ultimately, uh, which we are really looked at to the all right, not to repeat what my brother Kola Wale have said, in terms of palliative, the minimum we expected from government is policies that will encourage such palliatives that will touch the life of Nigerians and pull them out of poverty instead of pulling them further into poverty like this purported 8,000 Naira for 12 million families. For example, if government is able to fix the refineries and refineries work efficiently, even if it's just two refineries out of what we have that come to work, begin to produce and refine and begin to refine petroleum products across to be used across Nigeria, Mm-hmm. You will notice that automatically the cost of uh, transportation will drop. Then, government already mentioned that they have saved close to 400 billion from fuel subsidy remover. Like my brother from Serap mentioned, where is that fund? Have you accounted for that fund? Is that fund placed? In, a, in, a, in, in an instrument that is verifiable and is subjected to, to public view so that we will be sure that indeed such amount of money has been saved. If such amount of money has been saved, why can't we channel such fund into providing infrastructures that automatically you subsidize for Nigerians? And that will be Latin. That won't be um, 8,000 Naira that we pull Nigerians into poverty and then after six months you now say they should go ahead and die and just 12 million out of 133 million which is unfair we also ask government to immediately already um, a pilot of CNG was done in Benin mm-hmm. and as we speak those facilities that federal government provided for CNG are still there why can't we expand that pilot since we've done the pilot and it worked vehicles were converted measurable facts are there to prove had, this. Had the colleague of mine who converted a generator it now runs on gas thank you very much so why can't government now pick this 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 this, this project and deploy across the country because if government does that what it automatically means is that nigerians will have options and once options are available, you will notice that the cost of goods and services will go down, will begin to, 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 to go down. But, uh-